hello. Today I'm here with Michael Kalish at his studio in California, a fabulous artist. Hello. Hello. How are you? Um, thank you for having me here. Thanks for coming. So tell me, how did you get started in the art world? You know what? It was pretty strategic, to be honest with you. I had another career path that uh, did not work out. I played baseball in college. Really? Thought that was gonna be the path for me, but I was secretly an artist my entire life. I'd come from a creative family. My mom taught art for 30 years. My father's an inventor. There's a lot of kind of these things swirling around, so I was always an artist. So tell us about your first um, art or sculptures, because they're very interesting in what materials you use. You know, there's something about American license plates that are super iconic and poppy, and I love pop art and Warhol, Lichtenstein, and Basquiat. Those are the influences and the, and the guys, the artists that I love. I was like, this is the genre, and I'm going to find something Americana and marry it. And so you're moving into a different medium now. I mean, it's changing, or...? Yes, uh, I mean, I am frenetic anyways. I think a lot of creative people are, and it's awesome and exciting, but a dangerous place to be because I'm always thinking and ideating and waking up in the middle of the night. I think some of the, for me personally, some of the greatest things that have happened to me have been from that inspiration. I started collecting old vintage truck tailgates and then cutting them up, and it was, again, strategic. Like, what's the last thing that you would think an old, vintage, rusted, Ford Chevy truck would be made into. And it's like an elegant rose. And so again, it was like that, that juxtapositioning of, wow, it's an elegant, hopefully an elegant, uh, pretty rose. And in nature, things don't have right angles. They're all very naturally flowing. And you look at a flower, so it's hard to, sh to shape old rusted steel. And that was the challenge there. But that was the, the disruption, I guess. Mm. And, and I'd say probably the biggest thing to date was 2009 when uh, I worked with some pretty special collectors of mine mm. to build the largest monument I've ever built. And tell us a little bit about that because it's very unique. So I got an email from his wife and it just it seemed like one of those emails like I'm in the middle of you know wherever and I need someone to bail me out. Of it just seemed like one of those this kid is not real. I'm the wife of Muhammad Ali and we'd love to meet you. So anyways we did and they come to LA quite a bit and she was like you know we'd love to commission some work more work but we want to talk to you about something really unique and special. Uh, and it just became this really, really wonderful collaborative conversation and turned into the largest Muhammad Ali monument in the world. And, and my idea was, how do I make a 40 foot, this was like this thing in the middle of the night, how do I make this 40 foot sculpture that looks like you took a bunch of boxing bags, like real speed bags, like thousands of them, and threw them in the air and they like stuck in space. And then you walk around, you're looking at this, you don't know what it is, and then you get back to a certain perspective and all of the the, the boxing bags, which actually are pixels, wind up making a photorealistic image of his face. So I'm gonna take you into my little artistic world and talk to you, I'm curious, is this typically what you wear when you're um, sculpting or? I love fashion. I have always loved fashion before I was an artist. I have more clothes in my <laughs> closet, whether it's a Varvado suit or a Tom Ford shirt, or a vintage Levi that has paint splatters on them and burn marks. Everything I have has a little burn weld hole or paint splatter, I mean suits. So I just, I'm like, screw it. And I just wear that out. I love you for that because I feel like some people just, you know, they feel like they have to go to work in a certain thing. I yeah. mean, in, because of what they do, but like you're wearing it and you, I, I love that. Just be authentic. So my last question for you is how do you feel when you're dressed your best? With this much creativity, this much freedom in your life or anybody going down this path, you almost have to get up and assume that it's a, a real job, a real nine to seven job. And that starts with getting up and getting dressed. And I, for me personally, I've always put a lot of emphasis in that. In that. Mm -hmm. And now also more than ever, we're all walking brands. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I mean, I get that because I, you know, even when I'm going to work out, I, it's not that I care so much, but yeah. I do kind of want to look cute because it's, I'm, I'm walking brands. And you feel good about Feel great. Right? Yes, 100%. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Thank it's, you very it, much. It's very nice to meet you. Awesome to meet you too.